Hello everyone and welcome to my Autodesk Robot Structural Analysis tutorial. In today's Robot Structural Analysis tutorial, I'll be showing you how to model a continuous beam as shown in the bottom right over here. So before I begin this video, I'd like you to hit the like button, share this video, and subscribe for more Autodesk software tutorials. And without further ado, let's get started. So let's start with the frame 2D design over here. If you started off with the wrong option, it's okay, you can go to the Geometry tab over here and choose the Structure Type and you can find Frame 2D Design over here, like so. So the first step in modeling our continuous beam in Robot Structural Analysis is to draw in the nodes for the continuous beam. To do so, all you need to do is proceed to the top right over here and you can find a button labeled Nodes over here. So left click on it once. So I'll key in the following coordinates. So the first coordinate would be 0, 0 and click on add over here. The second point would be 6, 0 and click on add again. Next would be 12, 0 and the final point would be 18, 0 and click on close over here. You might notice that we cannot see any of the nodes over here or it's very difficult to see them. What you can do is toggle the node numbers over here so that you can see them from anywhere and it makes it easier to spot the nodes. So here are our four nodes over here. And now we have to draw in the bar elements that connects all of our nodes here. To do so, go to the bars button over here right underneath the nodes over here and change the bar type from simple bar to RC beam and by default you should have quite a few options here for your sections so for this tutorial I'll be showing you how to create a new section type all you need to do is just click on this box here with the three dots over here and a pop-up window will emerge titled new section so right now we are using a RC beam section type and you can select the material strength for your reinforced concrete beam. So I'll just leave it as C25 for now. And the breadth for my beam in this tutorial would be 300 millimeters here. And the height would be 600. And I'll be using a rectangular beam over here. And you might have noticed that Robot Structural Analysis made a custom label already. So this is based on the breadth and the height of the beam. So click on Add and Close. And I'll select this 300 by 600 beam over here. And I'll draw from Node 1 to Node 2. Node 2 to Node 3. And Node 3 to Node 4. And click on Close. And to view the member itself, all you need to do is select this section shapes over here. And you can see it in 3D, like so. If you want to go back to the original view, you can just click on front, like so. And you can turn it off as it's not needed for now. But you can turn on bar numbers over here, so you can see that we have three bars over here. So a quick tip for the bar elements is that if you made a duplicate on accident, just go to the geometry drop down over here and go to properties and sections and you can actually delete any member that you feel is no longer required. So for example, if I want to delete this rectangular beam over here, I just select it and click on delete section over here and click on yes and it's deleted like so and another useful tip is that if you chose the wrong section type for your bar you can just select it and change it over here you can choose from the drop down whatever beam that you have in your uh, analysis file so that's another tip right there so now let's move on to the supports for our continuous beam so to find the supports all you need to do is look for this particular symbol over here. Hover over it and it will say supports. And choose the pinned option. And I'll place it 
at all the nodes over here and click on close so now let's define the loads for our continuous beam over here so click on the load types over here and we will have one dead load and three live loads so click on add over here for your dead load and let's change it to live load now by clicking on this nature drop down and selecting live and click add three times okay so we have one dead load and three live loads and click on close to access the load tables you can just right click and go to tables over here and choose loads over here and click on ok so this table will emerge and as you can see right now the only load that has a magnitude right now is the dead load which is currently defined as the self weight over here so for this tutorial I will not be using the generated self weight and I'll be deleting it instead I'll be creating a user defined dead load instead so to move back to the beam that we've just drawn just now go to the view tab over here in the bottom left and you can see the beam once again so now let us actually apply the loads onto this continuous beam over here so proceed to the load definition over here and click on bar so from the diagram that I've shown you in the beginning we will have a uniform load so choose uniform load over here and for the dead load we will have 25 kilo newtons per meter so key in negative 25 click on add and select each of these bar elements here and apply and close so you won't be able to see the dead loads being applied but you can click on load value descriptions here and load symbols and you can see the dead load is already applied and the magnitude is negative 25 kilonewtons per meter if you forgot the negative sign the load will be acting upwards instead of downwards so that's one thing to note and now we must go to the live load cases over here so for live load 1 I will have a 10 kilonewton per meter load for bar 1 over here so click on load definition over here choose bar and change it from minus 25 to minus 10 click on add and select bar 1 and apply and close so this is the live load 1 case over here moving on to live load 2 the magnitude will still be the same minus 10 but I will apply it to bar number 2 over here and you don't actually have to close the load definition window over here you can actually just change to different load cases and apply the loads like so so now if I were to change from dead load 1 through to life load 1 2 and 3 you can see that I've applied the loads for this continuous beam so the next phase in this tutorial would be to show you how to do the load combinations so go to the loads drop down over here and click on automatic combinations over here so for this tutorial I'll be using BSEN 1990 2002 national annex so if I click on the drop down I have selected it already and I'll use the full automatic combinations over here and click on more over here and I will uncheck on SLS accidental actions over here and fire and click on generate so now let us proceed to the analysis of this continuous beam so click on calculations over here and you shouldn't have any issues whatsoever if you do then you probably have to remodel your continuous beam if not now you can proceed to the results so now let's quickly view the results for our analysis so go to the results drop down and click on diagrams for bars go to the parameters tab over here 
and I like to have the text displayed either at all locations or global extremes. So let's say that I want it to be displayed at all locations here. And in general, I prefer to have it differentiated between positive and negative bending moments, for example. So I'll choose differentiated, and you can either choose fence or filled, whichever you fancy. So I'll just use filled for now. Click on apply. Go back to NTM, and I will choose MY moment over here. And click on apply and close. So let's click on the drop down and we are interested in the ULS over here. So this is the ULS results over here. And let's try ULS plus over here. So this is the result from the ULS plus analysis for the ULS plus load case over here. So in another video, I'll be showing you how to actually check these values and whether or not they are in line with hand calculations by showing you how to use the bending moment coefficients. So stay tuned for that. If you enjoyed this tutorial, like this tutorial and share this tutorial and subscribe for more Autodesk software tutorials and civil engineering tutorials. If you're looking for textbooks that I have used before, in my undergraduate studies and in my career. Feel free to check the links in the description. And as always, stay safe, keep learning, and goodbye.